Hello, I'm Carl Rowan with Shoreline Products. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over how to remove the jaws, insert the jaws, how to change them around and invert them so they're OD clamping instead of ID clamping. And we're also going to go over how to take it apart and clean it out. So this is our standard 3.13 jaw chuck right here. And if you look at the chuck, you can see that it is laser engraved A, B, and C for the jaws and each of the jaws has a different tooth configuration on the back of it. So to take it out is relatively easy. You just open up your chuck. All right. If you have an older chuck, uh, on the new, newer chucks we change the design and it has webbing across the bottom here. So the jaw slots are the same width all the way out, very uniform. On the older style chucks that webbing was not there and you would tend to have one of these three jaw slots was just a hair tighter than the others. Okay, With the new chuck design that's not a problem and the jaws generally screw out nice and easy. If you get towards the outside, the further out the jaws go, the more resistance you have on the scroll. Uh, you might need to use your Tommy bars and actually get it open all the way. On this one I don't, so I'm not going to use them. So anyhow, we're going to open it up all the way. And when you get close to the outer edge, you can start pulling on your jaws a little bit and they should start to come out. That's A. That's C. And this is B. All right, so my jaws are out right now. Um, I just mixed them all up. I have no idea which one was A, B, or C. So if you look at the bottom of your jaws, okay, what you're going to have is on jaw number A, the first tooth is going to be right up towards the front, the, the pointed part of the jaw. It's going to be the, the the jaw with the tooth closest to the point. Jaw number B is going to have a tooth that's stepped back just a little bit further and jaw number C is going to have the biggest space from the front of the jaw to the first tooth and that's how that was, that's what defines it as jaws A, B, and C. Okay now if you look at the chuck, the scroll that's inside the chuck has a spiral scroll thread. It starts in the middle and spirals its way out. On the very outside of it, if you look down inside the jaw slot and you turn the scroll counterclockwise, counterclockwise as you're looking down here, clockwise if you're on the bottom, okay, you will see the scroll thread as you turn it moving further and further out. You will actually get to where the the very last thread comes all the way out almost to the outer diameter of the scroll and it stops and it's actually cut off square so it'll start into the jaws easiest. Okay, What you want to do is you want to look down your jaw slot number A and turn it till the last thread on the scroll disappears from the window right there. So then what I want to do is I want to put jaw number A into the slot. Stick it in and I push it in until that first tooth hits on what is actually the second thread of the scroll thread. Now on a lot of the chucks, uh, if they're new chucks or if they're older style, you might find it very difficult to get your jaw started into the, into the jaw slot. For starts, it, you've got to start it parallel to the slot. If your jaw is cocked up or down at all, the lead edge of your jaw is going to dig into the jaw slot on the chuck. The jaws are hardened, the chuck body is not. So work it in. If it's a little bit difficult, uh, the, the best tool we have for assembling our chuck is our uh, 732 Sherline T-Wrench. The handle's plastic. If you have a plastic hammer or you have one of these, you just give it a gentle tap to get it started. It'll, you'll feel it seat against that first thread or the second thread on the scroll. Then you start turning the, the scroll. Okay, right now it engaged and it's a little bit hard. 
right there, I can push it in. So you turn it a little bit and you push in, turn a little bit and push in. If it's hard, you turn it a little bit so there's resistance and you give it a little tap and you turn it some more. So that's the A jaw. Now I'm going to keep on turning the scroll until I see the first thread of the scroll come into the slot on the B, which is right there. Then I'm going to take the B jaw and I'm going to insert the B jaw into the slot. And again, I'm going to push it in until it hits against what is the second thread of the scroll. And I'm going to start turning again. Now, with each successive jaw that you put into the chuck, the amount of force on the scroll is greater. And also, you're starting where it's the absolute hardest area to, to get the jaws to move when they're all the way to the outside, especially if there's any misalignment. So on most chucks, you're going to find that you need to tap, tap, turn it in a little bit more, tap, tap, turn it in a little bit more. And now we go until the scroll thread, the first thread on the scroll shows up in the C window. I put in C jaw into the C slot. Again, I push it in until it touches the second thread. And then I start turning my scroll again. And right now, these are, these are working their way in nice and smooth. Again, if you need to, tap a little bit, tap a little bit, tap a little bit, turn it in. Tap again and turn it in. When you screw your jaws all the way in, they should all meet right at the center of the chuck. If one of them is off, that means that you're, either your, your jaws are mixed up, you know, B is in C or something like that, or you actually missed the scroll thread the first time around and got it on the second one for that specific jaw. And we have it right there, all the way in the center. So that's just taking the jaws out and replacing them the same orientation that they were in. Okay, now, if I want to turn the jaws around and I want to have them reverse so I have the, the steps facing outward, um, I take them all the way out, and what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to keep track of my B jaw and my, actually I'm going to keep track of all three of them. So I've got A, B, and C. When you take them out to invert them, B is going to stay where B is, this jaw, and it's going to just be turned around. Okay, your A and your C, you're going to flip around. So they're going to change positions. B stays where it is, A and C flip. So I'm going to take them out, A, B, C. So now I'm going to flip them this way. We're going to insert them this direction. Okay, so that's B, A, B, and C. So I'm going to invert these two, C over here, or A over here, and C over here. So, if you look at the, the teeth on the opposite side of the jaws now, what was C actually has a tooth closest to the, the, the back end of the jaw. B is still the same, it's in the middle, and now A is the furthest away from the back side of the jaw. That's why you're flipping those two jaws. So I'm going to do the same thing where I'm looking for the end of the thread on the scroll. There it is, and I'm going to take what was the C jaw and put it into the A slot, bring it in until it touches that second thread. Okay, I'm going to continue to thread, or turn the scroll until I see the, there we go, right there. I'm going to take the B jaw inverted and put it back into the B slot. And that's in. I'm going to turn it a little bit more. Now I'm looking for the Okay, and you might find that because this is a, a square edge than the other side that you might have to tap these guys a little bit more to get them going here. And there's the start of that one. And I'm going to put the A into the C slot all the way in. And now the jaws are inverted and the alignment is correct and you're good for doing 
OD clamping with the steps. Okay. And again, if you bring them in, the back sides of the jaws should all come into center line like that. Okay, now the next one is if you've been using your chuck forever and you never cleaned it out, you've got um, metal chips, aluminum chips, wood dust, whatever you're machining inside the scroll threads and your, your chuck gets harder and harder to use. You mo you'll probably find that in the area that you use it the most, this diameter right here, it's going to work very free. And when you start to try, especially if you try to, try to get the jaws out and move it all the way out, it gets harder and harder to use. That's because you have buildup of chips and everything else inside your chuck. So, if you have snap ring pliers, then you can open up your chuck and you can actually cheat doing your, uh, your jaw re replacements and inversion. You take your snap ring pliers, and we have a snap ring on the back which holds the scroll in place, and you put it in, oop, Whew, quick hands. Watch that it doesn't fly away. On some of the, the snap rings, you'll see that one side has been ground and the other side is not. These snap rings are, are punched out, uh, so if we have a tight fit, when we put the snap ring on, we'll grind the back side a little bit. This one has been ground. Make sure when you put it back on, you put the ground surface facing the scroll, and then your fit of your scroll of your chuck body will be correct. The next one, on the back of the chuck, this surface right here, this face right here, and the threads are critical for accurate mounting of your chuck. If you get dings or scratches on this face right here, or on your threads, when you put it back on your spindle, your chuck will not run true. Okay, these are critical surfaces. To get the scroll off, a lot of times it'll just pull off like that. Um, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, if you have a piece of wood, which is definitely softer than the metal here, just tap it a few times and your scroll will come off. So, if this had been a well-used chuck, you would see inside the scroll thread here all sorts of uh, chips and debris and everything. Uh, use solvent and clean this all out. Take your jaws out and clean the inside of your chuck. Clean it all up nice. We use the uh, super lube grease that we sell to lubricate our, our, our chucks and you just put some on your finger and just wipe it back into the scroll threads in several places and that's good enough to lubricate the entire chuck. So if I want to turn my jaws around now, then I go back to A, B, and C. A is the closest tooth, B is the second furthest away, and C is the furthest away from the front. And what I would do is put A in the A slot B into the B slot, C into the C slot, then I would push them all into the middle and get them centered up as best I can. Okay, they're going to have to be pretty much dead on center. I'm off a little bit on one. That's looking pretty good right there. Then I put my scroll back on. Uh, if the scroll, if you put it on at any slight angle whatsoever, there's there's like a half thou to a thou difference between the bore on the scroll and the diameter of the chuck. So it's very easy to get this cocked a little bit. If you do, it's not going to go on, uh, in which case you get your piece of wood out uh, and you just let it drop a few times. And that's usually enough to get your scroll to slide on for you. So then what I do, now that I have the scroll there and the jaws are in the middle, is I turn the scroll slowly until the teeth of the three jaws drop down into the scroll thread. And right there they dropped in and I turn it all the way in. You don't want to have them, you can, what I actually did was I pulled them all back just a hair so I had a little bit of a gap but they still looked like they were pretty centered and then they fell in, it fell in easier 
and now I thread my scroll in and everything's centered up in the middle. Now I take my snap ring with the ground surface towards the scroll, put a thumb over the snap ring so it doesn't fly away again, and using my snap ring pliers just spread them out and drop it back in place. Right now it's a little bit high right there, basically you just push it down once you have it in place and it will snap back into the, to the groove. And there you have it, we're back in business. Clean scroll, jaws realigned, and we're good to go. Thank you.